Hello everyone, welcome to the signal system class. In this lecture, we will discuss the initial value theorem used in J transform. The initial value theorem states that if the J transform of Ft is equal to Fz, then limit of Ft as t tends to 0 will be equal to limit of Fz as z tends to infinity. So let us see the proof of the initial value theorem. From the definition of the Z transform, we know that the Z transform of Ft can be written as Fz and this is equal to summation n is equal to 0 to infinity f of nt into z to the power minus n. Now substituting the different values of n in this equation, we get Fz is equal to f0 plus ft z to the power minus 1 plus f2t z to the power minus 2 plus f3t z to the power minus 3 and so on. Here the value of n is 0 in this expression the value of n is 1 here the value of n is 2 and so on. Now let the value of z tends to infinity. So we can write f of z when z tends to infinity will be equal to f of 0 plus 0 plus 0 plus 0 plus 0 because when we substitute the value of z in equal to infinity in these equations it will become 1 by infinity and 1 by infinity is 0, 1 by infinity squared is also 0. So all these terms will be 0 except this term f0. So we get f0 is equal to f of z when z tends to infinity. Now we can write f0 as limit of ft when t tends to 0 is equal to limit of fz when z tends to infinity. So we have proved that limit of ft when t tends to 0 will be equal to limit of fz when z tends to infinity and this is the initial value theorem. Now let us see the corollary of this initial value theorem. This says that if the z transform of ft is equal to fz and f0 is equal to 0 then f of capital T will be equal to limit of z fz when z tends to infinity. So let us see the proof of this corollary. Again from the definition of z transform we know that the z transform of ft can be written as fz and that is equal to summation n is equal to 0 to infinity of f n t into z to the power minus n. Again we will substitute the different values of n in this equation so that this equation comes out to be f of z is equal to f0 plus f t z to the power minus 1 plus f 2 t z to the power minus 2 plus f 3 t z to the power minus 3 and so on. Now it is given that f0 is 0. So we will substitute the value of f0 is equal to 0 plus ft z to the power minus 1 plus f2t z to the power minus 2 plus f3t z to the power minus 3 and so on. Now multiplying both the sides of this equation by z, we get z f z will be equal to ft plus f2t z to the power minus 1 plus f3t z to the power minus 2 and so on. Now we will take limit of z f z when z tends to infinity. So these terms will become 0 because when z tends to infinity this will be 1 by infinity. 1 by infinity is 0, 1 by infinity square is also 0, 1 by infinity cube is also 0. So all these terms will come out to be 0. So we will be left only with only the first term. So this implies that f of t will be equal to limit of z f z when z tends to infinity. This is the proof of this corollary. Hope everything is clear to all of you. See you in the next presentation.